Okay, so let's move into uh, the robot container. Um, so we can declare some things so we get rid of this one error we still have in the drive with joysticks. But we're going to handle um, a lot of different tasks in that robot container. Uh, the main thing would be declaring commands and subsystems. Uh, so let's do that. So we're going to, you can see that it has kind of these uh, default uh, commands kind of in place here. Um, it has an example subsystem and an example command. We're going to do something similar to that. Um, we're actually going to um, declare um, our commands and subsystems up here, and we're going to initialize them inside our constructor. Uh, eventually, we're actually going to nuke um, this example command as well. Uh, but we'll leave this stuff for a minute or two. I'm going to add like a timed autonomous command, which this example uh, command is currently using as, or set as the autonomous command. We're going to get rid of that eventually. But for right now, let's just add the stuff we need so we don't generate a whole bunch of extra errors. So this I already grabbed um, from my notepad++ file. Um, the things that we need to declare for our drivetrain. So the first thing is we actually declare the drivetrain subsystem itself. Um, since it's already there now, uh, we can click on quick fix, import drivetrain, uh, which is my own class. Uh, drive with joysticks is the command that we created. I'm going to hit click quick fix, import that as well. Um, we don't have um, this drive forward timed. Um, command yet. Uh, we are going to make that in a little bit. Um, so um, actually maybe we should do that. Let's do that right now. Let's make that drive forward command and then I can get rid of this example stuff. So uh, we're going to go back over to our uh, commands over here and I'm just going to add a new command. Um, so create new class or command. I want to do a new command, and I'm going to call this one. This is a little different. I'm going to call it drive forward, but we're going to do timed. Now, what this is going to be is it's going to be a command that just runs that drive forward command, but it's going to run it on a timer. And so we're going to run it for a certain number of seconds that we'll set in the constant. So I'm just going to hit enter. Now, we've done this before, so we can do this again, um, creating a command. Things are going to be a little different this time. Last time we used the execute. This time we're going to add a timer and some different things in here. So this one's going to be a little different. So let me pop over and grab the things that we're first of all going to initialize here, like a drivetrain. So if I look into drive forward timed, um, that's the first things that I'm going to initialize. But I'm going to initialize uh, or declare, sorry, initialize the wrong term there, declare these three things. I'm going to declare a drivetrain. Uh, I'm going to quick fix that to add the library we need. Um, I'm going to declare a Boolean variable called finish. I'm going to use that. And we're going to declare uh, a timer, which is built into um, the WPI libraries. Make sure you select the right one. We want the WPI library timer. And I'm going to set that as well. Now it says the yellow here just says that that variable has not been used yet. So that's OK. Um, so we're going to declare those things. Um, once again, I'm going to grab, just because it takes an argument, I'm going to just kind of replace that entire constructor uh, with a constructor that takes in an argument um, called drivetrain, dt. We'll do the same thing that we did in the drive with joysticks. And then we are going to also add requirements drivetrain. I don't need to go over why that's there. And then we're going to also um, initialize this kind of timer here inside that constructor. Okay, um, then what we want to do with this class is inside. Now this time, last time we worked with the driver joysticks inside the execute. This time around we're going to work inside the initialize because we're going to start a timer. Then we're going to have our own loop, a while loop, uh, that's going to handle how long we're going to run for. So let's just kind of see how this looks. Back over in Visual Studio Code, inside the initialize, this is the run once or setup method. Okay, we're going to do a timer reset. 
just in case we come back to our timer and it's already running or something like that. We want to make sure it's reset before we do anything else. Essentially set that to zero and set our timer to zero. Then we're going to do a timer start. Okay. Once again, this is just using dot syntax. Uh, they're they're kind of uh, functions that are members of that timer class. Okay. So it has a bunch of different stuff. If I was to type in timer dot, I can see start, stop, reset, wait, a whole bunch of stuff in there or different methods we could access. Okay. But we're going to do a reset and we're going to start our timer when it initializes. Uh, and we're going to do a while loop here while timer get is less than constants drive forward time. So we're going to set kind of a drive forward time. And so we want to do what we're going to do inside our while loop is we're going to drive forward while this drive forward time is um, or while timer dot get is less than that drive forward time. Okay, so our drive forward time, we're going to set to say three seconds or something. We don't crash too badly when we run that at first. Um, so we're going to set that to three seconds. Our timer is going to run continually. When it gets to three seconds, it's going to stop doing what's ever in here. Okay, so let's solve the problems first though. We've got constants here. Let's just do a real quick fix. Uh, import constants FRC robot. We've done this before. Okay, we have two constants we haven't created yet, drive forward time. Let's do the quick fix. Constant drive forward time, make that in constants, sure. Sounds good, and I'm actually gonna set that right away. I'm gonna go to constants. I want my drive forward time not to be zero seconds, I want it to be three seconds. Uh, 3.0, sure, that's good. I'm gonna go back to drive forward time. And autonomous speed, I have this drive forward and I have autonomous speed that I haven't created in constants yet. Um, oftentimes we don't want our, our autonomous speed to be quite as quick as our teleop speed. So I'm gonna go quick fix, I'm gonna add this variable, create constant autonomous speed in constants. And I'm gonna go to my constants again and I'm gonna set that autonomous speed to, our normal drivetrain speed is 0 0.7. I'm gonna set this to 0 0.4. So it's 40%. That will be good. I don't want to go too fast and autonomous um, because I'm not in control. So we're going to go back over to uh, drive forward timed. Okay. And so we have that set up inside our initialize. And notice something that's happening here when we're done. As soon as that loop finishes, we're going to say finish equals true. Okay. And then we're going to go actually down here to this uh, public boolean is finished and we're going to actually return we're going to put that that finish variable right here so we're going to put finish so when that says it turns to true we're actually going to end this command and so that's going to control that life cycle of that drive forward okay remember i talked about um, our commands controlling the life cycle of methods that are stored within the subsystem that's really in essence what we're doing here and I think that's all there is to this one. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to put in the interrupted. We're going to do drive train stop as well. Uh, and that's kind of the last thing we're going to put in there. So that's just that stops our um, speed controllers or motor controllers. Okay, so we're good. Let me just hit save. Okay, so we have um both uh drive forward timed we have a drive with joysticks and notice that our error disappeared here now that we have that declared inside a robot container okay so we have no errors there so i'm going to click save just make sure everything's good i should just click save all and go to robot container okay we have drive forward timed well we know we have that class now so let's go to quick fix yeah there it is okay import drive forward times we do timed we just created it so let's put that there okay so those things are created, but I haven't initialized them in the robot container and there's still an error there. So let's pop back over to my code here, uh, robot container, and we're gonna initialize all those things that we declare. So let's go back to there. Inside our constructor for robot container, above this configure button bindings, we're gonna address that in a different video. Uh, if we add more subsystems, 
Um, but right now we're just using the Xbox as axes, not using the buttons. So we're just going to leave that for that configure buttons. You can see that that method is just called down here or just created down here. It's called here and it's down here. We're going to put our button stuff in there after. Um, but for right now, inside here, we're, we're initializing that drive train. Um, subsystem, we're initializing the drive with joysticks. Um, command, and notice that we're giving it drivetrain as an argument, which we set up in the constructor that that needed to have a drivetrain argument. Uh, drive with joystick uh, requirements are that it has a drivetrain. You can see that. And then this actually line of code here isn't for everything, but for this case, we want drivetrain set default command to drive with joysticks. What that does is it's going to make it so that my drivetrain is always kind of looking for that um, command or, or it's trying to read that command, which in essence, if you look back over at that command, is going to always be reading that joystick value, which is what we want. As long as we're in teleop, we want to be able to control our robot. And so that's going to allow that to happen. Okay, so back to robot container. Uh, what we do have here is drive, uh, driver joystick equal new Xbox controller constants joystick number. Well, we haven't created that joystick number constants. If we remembered back to being in the drive station. Uh, one thing we might remember from that is that we had Xbox controller had a number to it. Well, let's just do the quick fix first and create this constant. Create constant joystick number in constants. It's going to create that and set it to zero to start with. Okay, but what I'm actually going to do is we're going to pop into that uh, our FRC drive station and just check what what uh, our controller number is. I think we might be able to remember it, but let's just check and see. So let's go inside FRC drive station. That again, it's probably going to launch smart dashboard in our way again, but that's a yeah, it is. We're closing that. We don't want that right now. Uh, but we're going to pop in here, and you can see our controller number was zero. Okay, so that's U the USB zero. That's typically what that's going to be if you only have one controller, what it's going to be. So let's just double check our constants. Yeah, joystick number is set to zero. Um, but while I'm here, let's take a look at some other things that we can see here. These are our buttons, and I think there's. Oh man about 10 buttons but you can see if i press button y one lights up so i know that's button number four if i press this button that's button number three x b is button number two and a is button number one on an xbox controller but you can always test those things if you want to program something to a button you can do that i can check the right stick right stick is axis five and four um, my triggers are also Axis numbers, axis three and axis two. I can check those quickly. My bumpers are here. Okay, I can see that my POV pad is that directional pad. I can check what those are as well. So the nice thing about our drive station is when you click on that USB, you can kind of see what those button numbers are so we can program to them uh, in our code. Okay, so we're almost done with this kind of first tutorial. So let's go back over to our robot container again. And I have everything declared, okay? This is this default command is gonna be set. So one thing that I'm not using currently is this drive forward timed, okay? But I actually want to use that. Um, now, did I set the time? I, what did I set the time to? In constants, I set we're gonna drive forward for three seconds, okay? So back to robot container, um, that's set, but it's not tuned to a button or anything right now. And I, and I could program it to a button, but we're going to cover uh, button bindings in another video here coming up. Uh, what I do want to do, though, is I actually want to set it to the current default autonomous. Okay, so I want to set it to that default autonomous. So if I look up here, we have this command declared up here. I actually don't want that to be the command that runs in autonomous. I actually want to set this to my drive forward timed command. OK, 
Okay, so right now if I left that as is, and when we kicked in autonomous mode, okay, that drive forward time.